far? Good. हमारे कल्चर में मैंने ये लास्ट टाइम भी किया था एंड आई गॉट सो मेनी ईमेल्स आफ्टर दिस सो आई एम गोइंग टू डू इट अगेन के व्हेन आई वाज ग्रोइंग अप I used to say that I am so grateful. Uh, sorry, when I was growing up, I was not grateful to God for making me a female. I got to see my brothers had more fun. Mere jo cousins the, they had more freedom. They were able to study and pursue the fields they wanted to pursue, and they had so much more fun in life than I did. So I hated being a girl. It was all about just go up tomboy kete, my munda kete. That's what I was. I was just constantly trying to be a guy because I thought that was cooler and that just meant more freedom. Now at this age I can tell you I'm so grateful to God he did not make me a man and I'll tell you why <laughs> I'll tell you why Abhi aayegi aapko Here's why because I've I've you know since I've been here my my passion is to study people I study and I understand and I have had a lot of people share with me what they're going through and one of the biggest problems that men come to me with is insomnia and extreme anxiety and we we have seen cases of uh, young men in their 40s dying of heart attack and here's what happens when you're a man in pakistan when you're born you have to you're told from the beginning ke aapne study mein acche marks lekar aane ladkiyon pe itna zor nahi hota ladkon pe zyada hota hai why because you are going to be the one who's going to be the breadwinner for the family you also you have to take care of your parents फिर खुशकिस्मती से आपकी शादी होती है वो और एक दैट्स अ होल न्यू सेट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज नाउ यू हैव टू प्लीज योर वाइफ ऑल्सो टेक केयर ऑफ हर ऑल्सो देन यू हैव चिल्ड्रन वो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी भी आपके ऊपर है फिर उसके बाद मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर गोइंग टू बी यू हैव जॉब यू हैव करियर्स वहाँ पर भी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है वहाँ पर भी आपको मैनेज करना है फिर आप दिन में जब घर आ रहे होते हैं आपने जो दिन में दस काम किए हैं उनमें से आठ अच्छे हैं लेकिन हाईलाइट सिर्फ वो दो होते हैं जो गलत हुए होते हैं उसके ऊपर फिर पंजाबी उसमें डंडे बढ़ते हैं एंड द सैड थिंग इज दैट बिकॉज यूर अ मैन यू नॉट अलाउड टू शो योर इमोशंस वाई बिकॉज स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन डोंट फील एनी थिंग स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन डोंट से एनी थिंग एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन मोस्ट डेफिनेटली डोंट क्राई यस दैट इज बलोनी दैट इज अ लाई क्वेश्चन आई लव इट थैंक यू सो मच can can we is it okay if we just wait till we get thank you so much because what i wanted to say was ke who is the strongest man that we know that has ever lived on this planet can somebody tell me the strongest man sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes did he cry yes he wept hazrat umar jo ke mane jaane jangju the aur bahut strong the aur bahut akhar the वो रसूल पाक सल्लम की वफात में बच्चों की तरह रोए वो रो वी टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट स्ट्रॉन्ग मैन डोंट क्राई सो लेट्स जस्ट पुट दैट असाइड घर जाके सब रोइएगा पहले ऑब्जर्व द रिपल इफेक्ट ऑफ योर इमोशंस व्हेन यू आर गोइंग थ्रू एन इमोशनल आउटपर्स दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू इन द वर्क एंड इन योर फैमिली ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आज का चूंकि टॉपिक इज मोर अबाउट वर्क प्लेस सो आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैरिज एंड डिवोर्स बट आई एम होपिंग एवरीबडी इज मेकिंग दोज कनेक्शन दिस इज ऑल इट्स एप्लीकेबल एवरीवेयर वेन यू हैव एन इमोशनल आउटपर्स लेट्स इन द वर्क प्लेस वॉट हैपन्स पीपल अराउंड यू लेट्स ए यूर द बॉस लेट्स ए यूर द मैनेजर दे नॉट गोइंग टू से एनी थिंग टू यू यू आर हैविंग एन आउटपर्स ऑन वन पर्सन एवरीबडी एल्स इज गेटिंग अफेक्टेड येस now they're not feeling that they can come up and open up to you or maybe their job is insecure whatever it is it is affecting the production and the productivity of the workplace by your emotional outburst now look at it in um, in a family situation mia bibi ki ladai jab hui chahe theek thi galat thi jo bhi thi the children are watching and hearing they're getting affected their whole life actually is going to be determined by the constant interaction between mother and father people that are emotionally out of control create a lot of anxiety and a feeling of uh, lack of safety in children those children grow up without knowing ever why they are deeply depressed they become manic depressive and they never feel safe and secure in this world because it came from their childhood irrational outburst of or, or irrational and uncontrolled outbursts of emotions so observe next time you have an emotional outburst 
you must examine, sit down and examine the effect it had on everybody else around you. If you are brave enough, ask them. Most of us will deal with it in different ways. Some of us, unfortunately, will deal with it in very destructive ways, drugs, alcohol, behaviors that are not conducive to a happy life. Many of us do it. Overeating is one of them. <clears throat> that feeling that is arising in you in that time, it can, it can probably take even a few days, maybe a few weeks for you to get over it. But every one of us will do one thing. We will actively try to find ways to not feel bad anymore, right? It seems like the logical thing to do. I don't want, this feeling sucks, I don't want to feel bad, so I think I'm going to go watch a movie. I think I'm going to go do something else. In case of, um, I'll use uh, example from personal life, in case of a breakup, because I do a lot of counseling on that, whether it's a divorce or an, a, a relationship breakup, the first thing that friends, good wishers, advise people to do is go into a next relationship. Foreign. Kya mujhe kisi ne kaha tha? Lohe ko sirf lohe hi kaatta hai. Kya brilliant strategy hai. Zabardast. Phir is lohe ko kis lohe se kaatenge ab aap? Because there's a reason why the breakdown happened. Okay? The, the, when you are feeling bad, these are just two extreme examples, but whatever happens, when you feel bad, that is your soul communicating with you, telling you something. That information is gold. You have to then learn how to go into that feeling, identify it. Okay, I'm feeling disappointed. Why am I feeling disappointed? How does that make me feel? Go deeper, keep asking yourselves questions because disappointment is the layer. That's the first layer. Behind it is something else. Oh, this makes me feel like, hmm, I'm inadequate. That's a very big one. A lot of us feel that. I'm inadequate. Yani, main enough nahi hu. Main kabhi bhi enough nahi hoonga. Ya main kabhi bhi enough nahi hoongi. That thought immediately makes us depressed. Ye hume pata hi nahi hai, kyunki ye millisecond mein sab kuch ho raha hota hai. Ye bachpan se chala ar hai. And we just start making decisions and we start feeling things based on those things. You must learn to lean into that discomfort. Please, next time you feel bad about anything, do not try to push it under the rug. That is gold. That information is what is telling you what is missing inside. Because nothing that happens on the outside should determine your happiness or sense of well-being. That day in court in 2009, when I started my journey, that was the gift I got after discovering myself, after discovering who I truly was and what made me me, what made me fulfilled. Ultimately, it took some time, ultimately what I found was what is inside of me. No relationship breakdown or presence or nothing else now determines my happiness. Nobody can take that away from me. It's so powerful to have that, that sense of well-being. So lean into that discomfort. And we'll talk about some specific strategies in a little bit. This word should not be feel, it should be feel. Feel your emotions physically. <clears throat> so whenever our soul is trying to communicate with us, lean into your discomfort, you will get information about who you are and what you want through physical sensations. Aapko jab ghussa chadta hai, jis joh bohat ghusile log hain audience mein, mashallah say that you are powerful people by the way, anger is a beautiful energy. If you learn how to channelize it, it's a wonderful energy to have. Allah Ta'ala ne ek reason hai joh aapko us kism ki jabir personality ka malik bina hai. It's just that it's not managed well so it shows up as uncontrolled anger. It is telling you something. There's a physical sensation. Jab aapko ghussa chadne lagta hai, toh aapko probably pata chal jata hooga ki mujhe ghussa chad hai. Right? Maybe there's shortness of breath, aapko, maybe sar mein pressure feel ho raha Kuch na kuch hona shuru hota hai with every emotion. They trigger a physical response and a sensation. Learn what that is for you. It's very important. We will do an exercise where I will help you to sense a physical sensation that you're feeling right now to actually feel what the emotion is behind it. This is the one thing that I do almost on a daily basis. Now it takes me five minutes to do it. But I do it every day just to check, how am I feeling? Because here's the funny thing. We don't know how we're feeling most of the times. 
until the emotion becomes very strong and loud. Then we, oh, wow, yeah. You know? Um, as as um, Mustafa Saab was mentioning, that I've been having a lot of dental pain for 10 days. It's been relentless. It's been horrible. And even yesterday, I had to go to the emergency room to take a shot for pain. <clears throat> so it's been kind of just blah for me. And so when I did my scan this morning, it was really interesting. I felt fine. My cousin was taking care of me. But when I felt my sensation, I felt deep sadness. I couldn't understand. Why am I feeling sad? So I went deeper into that. And I'll teach you how to do that. I went deeper into that, and I realized that feeling so sick made me miss my mother very much. You know, it's only been two years since she died. So that sadness was inside me, yet I didn't consciously feel it. Because our brain doesn't want us to feel things that it thinks, oh, no, she's going to feel bad about it, so I'm going to block it. Nothing gets blocked. It's all there. Our reactions, our moods, everything is based on that. So that connection to yourself is so important. Make it your goal to become so clear about who you are and what you feel that it's like something enters your field and boom, you know it. Because here's what happens. It's like a volcano, right? Aapko ye lagta hoga kabhi kabhi ke mujhse last event mein kisi ne question pucha tha, Madam, mein kya karu? Mein bohat control karne ki koshish karta hoon, lekin mein phat padta hoon. I just can't help it and I just erupt. I said, well, if you use the word erupt, it's like a volcano. Volcano ki tarah, volcano bhi achanak nahi erupt hota. Bohat deir tak rumbling chal rahi hoti hai. Woh prepare kar raha hota hai to erupt. And then it suddenly erupts and the lava comes out. In our case also, eruption achanak aise hi nahi hoti hai. There are unchecked emotions that we keep pushing down, we keep pushing down, we don't want to acknowledge them, we want to feel good, whatever. And then suddenly it erupts. Luckily, you know, volcano, uh, the lava cannot be controlled. But we can control our emotions. And I'll tell you what, jis tarah lava burn karta hai aur jitna destructive hai, isi tarah se hamari unchecked emotions, when they disrupt, they are also very, very destructive. <clears throat> know who and what pushes your buttons. Zyada tar logon ko pata hota hai ki mujhe falana banda baut bura lagta hai. Uska wo ye banda to bas jo bhi hai and I can't stand that. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. But do you sit down and examine? Kyun bura lagta hai? Why does this person rub me the wrong way? What is it that triggers me about this person? Then go deeper into that. <clears throat> I happen to have such person in my life. He's a relative. <laughs> Can't escape. I think relatives are huge gifts because they keep telling, the moment you think, oh, I'm, I think I've become so evolved, I'm so emotionally mature, I am so good, I'm so cool. Aise log humare saamne aate hain you just wake up like, oh God, I'm like starting from step one, right? Because nobody can push your buttons like family can. <laughs> nobody. Humare spiritual circles mein ka jata if you think you're very spiritually mature, go spend a weekend with your parents. You will come back <laughs> very down to earth. <laughs> and that's true. So that relatives pushes my buttons. I think he's a male chauvinist. I think he's a misogynist. And I don't think he can stand me because I am an independent woman who does not need a man in her life. I push all of his buttons. <laughs> so he pushes mine. I know it. And I have made peace with it. And I now know how to manage him. I have not had an outburst with him in years now. It used to be on a weekly basis. Right? Know what and who pushes your buttons so that you can manage it within yourself. Um, a strong, emotionally balanced woman is a sexy woman, by the way. That's another class I teach in the US. <laughs> but that's very, very important because nobody can trigger you. You're always in your element. You're strong that way. And, and of course, a man is also sexy if he's, if he's strong and emotionally balanced. <clears throat> Keeping a journal about your emotions, that's a very important one because um, I know a lot of people wonderful people that are not really that much in touch with their own emotions. They, at some point in their life, maybe in their childhood, they had to learn. Hum sab logon ko sikhaya jata hai, acha bachcha banna hai. Acha bachcha ya achhi bachchi banna hai. Achha bachcha ye nahi karte, achhi bachchi ye nahi karte, achha bachcha ye nahi karte. So, some people will 
force, them, force this upon themselves so much that a part of them disconnects. And therefore, they cannot feel their own emotions anymore. They work on autopilot. They are pleasers. They have to, they have a goal. They will achieve that goal without ever getting in touch with their emotions. That usually works really well for a, for a while. Most of the times, I see people in their 40s go haywire <laughs> that have done this because uske baad your true self wants to come out. And you, they just get confused. Why am I doing this? What, what is going on with me? That's usually the reason that they were not in touch with their emotions. And therefore, now their emotions are making themselves felt. They are no longer going to be ignored. So keeping a journal, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> This will help everybody, by the way. Even if you think that you are very much in touch with your emotions, I have news for you. You are not until you do this exercise. <clears throat> you know, when, um, when I started this journey of self-discovery, my mother, Allah Jannat Naseeb Kare, she was a very conservative religious woman. She actually was one of the founding members of Al Huda, if you guys are familiar with that organization. So you can imagine what kind of a person she was. She really loved Islam, very passionate about Islam, and believed firmly that her daughter was basically going straight to hell. So <clears throat> one day she called me. You are smiling, so I guess you can relate to that. I think we can all relate to that at one point in our lives. So, um, so she calls me up during <coughs> Ramadan to say that this is the first and I said to her, Ammi, what I'm doing at this time, that's the biggest thing. My one-one time is in my one-one time. Ammi, happy. Mashallah, mashallah. What are you doing? Which word are you doing? Which word are you doing? And I said to her, because I was working with a coach at that time, the coach had given me an assignment. Ke, he asked me, how many positive thoughts do you think you think in a day? And how many negative thoughts do you think in a day? I said, I'm a very positive person, mostly it's positive thoughts, and gave him a number. I don't remember what it was. He said, okay, then I want you to do this. I want you to take a journal with you everywhere that you go, and I want you to note down every single time you have a negative thought about yourself, about other people, or about situations and events in life. Any negative thought that crosses your mind, I want you to write that down. And then when you have written it down, I want you to think, three to four positive thoughts to negate that negative thought, right? One negative thought means I have to now think four thoughts, positive thoughts. I said, fine. <clears throat> well, it was brutal, as you can imagine. Within the first six hours, I was exhausted. I had no idea how many negative thoughts I was thinking in a day. It was brutal, and I, I could not believe it. And what began to happen next was very interesting. I did the exercise, I think, for three days, and then I couldn't do it, because he wanted me to, to note down every thought. So what happened was that my brain is, I mean, our brains are amazing. They're so plastic. They're so flexible. They will develop very quickly. So my brain realized, uh-oh, if I let her think a negative thought, then I have to come up with four positive thoughts? That's a lot of work. I don't want to do that. So the moment the negative thoughts started to come up, boom, it got pressed down. Boom, it, got, it became automatic. And that is what my trainer wanted me to learn myself. So this is very important. When I tell you guys to do something, please note it down, because you will not learn unless you do these things experientially. experientially. And that's what I had to do. And that's why I said, Mera ek -ek lamhai badat me because, man, I had no idea. I was so ungrateful and so... Uh, negative about so many things. It's not going to be about noting down each and every thought. At the end of the night, just sit down, make a journal. Think about the things that triggered you. That I, went, I did this today. Just write a kind of a summary. This is what happened. And you know what? This thing made me feel very upset or this thing annoyed me or this thing really made me happy, even if you don't understand why. You know, my boss said something nice to me. It made me feel elated. Like my whole work, whole day work was worth it. Or my wife gave me a compliment and life looked beautiful. As if I was a strong man, I'm a king, I can conquer the world. Write down those thoughts. 
And then as you begin to look at those after two weeks, you will see a pattern emerge. You will begin to see, huh, when other people say these nice things about me, I feel really good about myself. Nothing wrong with it. But do question then, why? Why is your opinion of self so dependent on others? That will give you some clues. Because again, we go back to self. What they are giving you, you can give to yourself 100 times more, where you will not need them anymore, where your, your um, sense of well-being and happiness is not going to depend. What if they don't say a nice thing to you? Is your life going to be over? Are you going to feel totally deflected and destroyed? It happens. It happens to a lot of people. So this exercise will really help you to recognize those patterns. <clears throat> Healthy boundaries. Especially under stress. I exhibited um, an example of healthy boundaries today. Can anybody point out what that was? OK. When I asked you, when I talked about how we were going to exchange opinions and questions, that was a boundary. That was a healthy boundary that was communicated early on. It's an example, and, and it was communicated in a manner which still validated that, yes, your opinions are important to me. Your questions are also important to me. But in the interest of sharing this information that so many people have come here to receive, we must do it in this manner.